and welcome to the end time show for our channel we'll be doing a lesson called revelation 17 antichrist and the 10 kings arising en route to a one world government as we can see um this article was published on the guardian.com march 26 of 2020 um, i'm entitled gordon brown calls for a global government to tackle the coronavirus on um, former uk Prime Minister Gordon Brown has urged world leaders to create a temporary form of global government to tackle the twin medical and economic crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The former Labour Prime Minister, who was at the center of the international efforts to tackle the impact of the near meltdown of the banks in 2008, said there was a need for a task force involving world leaders and health experts and the heads of the international organizations that would have executive powers to coordinate the response. So indeed, there's definitely a pandemic that is taking place with this coronavirus. Um, people are indeed um, have been taken ill by this and you've had deaths, but also too, um, the powers that be are using this also too to push their own agendas, which we should be looking um, close eye out on, and we should be trying to discern that we are definitely living in the last days. So the key verse of this lesson, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 11 through 14, and it reads, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth beast, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And the ten kings which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So to kind of connect Revelation um, chapter 17, which is in the New Testament, Old Testament scripture, which kind of correlates with um, that is Daniel chapter 17, or Daniel, excuse me, Daniel chapter 7, verse 17 through 23, there's only 12 chapters of Daniel. So excuse me for that mishap, but let's go on. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break into pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the others which came up, before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes, and the mouth that spake very great things, who looked as was more stout than his fellows. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. Until the Ancient of Days came, the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the same came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall break and shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. So as we can see, um, the history of occultism and a one world government, as we can see the key players in this chart, um, the ancient mystery religions, which began with Nimrod and Sim his wife Semiramis. Uh, once the event took place, the Tower of Babel, and they began to um, break off and move throughout the world. The mystery religions went out into Egypt, into India, into Persia, into Greece, and all throughout Earth that you have the hierarchy of these priests who carried on the mystery religions. You had a hierarchy. Um, we can see 
um, Freemason there and Illuminati. So we see all the different key players, but let's look at the key players for a one world government. When we look at the key players for a one world government, the Council of Foreign um, Relations, the United Nations, the Bilderberg um, Group, the Club of Rome, which will primarily be focusing on in this lesson, um, the Royal Institute of International Affairs and the Trilateral Commission. Now the Club of Rome, it's founded in 1968. The Club of Rome is a global think tank that deals with a variety of international political issues. According to his website, the Club of Rome is composed of scientists, economists, businessmen, international high civil servants, heads of states and formal heads of states from all five continents who are convinced that the future of humankind is not determined once and for all that each human being can contribute to the improvement of our societies. Um, the Club of Rome has less than 100 people in its organization. So um, statement that they're trying to make sure they make improvements in society, it sounds good, but what is the actual agenda? Is it the good for all mankind? We shall see. The Club of Rome had its beginnings in April of 1968 when the leaders from 10 different countries gathered in Rome and at the invitation of Arillo Pixia, a prominent Italian industrialist with close ties to the Fiat Navalati corporations. The organizations claim to have the solution for world peace and prosperity. However, those solutions always seem to promote the concept of world government at the expense of national sovereignty. The Club of Rome has been in charge with the task of overseeing the regionalization and unification of the entire world. The club could therefore be said to be one of the step above the Bilderbergs in the one world hierarchy. The COR's founder, Pesexi, has been close associate of the Bilderbergs, and as far as I've been able to determine, most of the directives for the planning of the world government are presently coming from the Club of Rome. Club of Rome's findings and recommendations are published from time to time in special, highly confidential reports, which sent the power elite to be implemented on 17 or September 17, 1973, the Club of Rome released one such report entitled Regionalize an Adaptive Model, Model of the Global World System, prepared by COR members Mihal Musavik and Edward Pestel. The documents revealed that the club has divided the world into 10 political economic regions which it refers to as kingdom. So it kind of makes sense when we read the beginning scripture of Revelation chapter 17, verses 11 through 14, and Daniel chapter 7, verses um, 17 through 23. Club of Rome founder states, their world model is based on the developments of the multi-level hierarchical systems and theories divides the world into 10 inter dependent and mutually interacting regions of political and economic environmental coherence. It will be recognized, of course, that these are still prototype models. Masovic and Pestel have assumed the Herculean task and the full implementation of the work will take many years. So here we have the what they have mapped out, which this took place in the early 70s. They mapped out, which um, we already know the European Union. Um, there's been talk with um, North America forming their own union with um, Canada, the United States, and Mexico. So here we have the blueprint of uh, one world government or regionalization of the different governments. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 8 through 10 states, All these things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. 
The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it be said, see there is new, it hath already of old time, which before us. So there's really nothing new under the sun. So let's go ahead and dive in. The origins of 10 kings and 10 governments. According to the philosopher Plato, whose works like the Republic are widely read by the ruling elite of our day, Atlantis was a highly advanced scientific technological civilization that was ruled by 10 kings. Most legends agree that the progeny of Polito and Poseidon did evidently produce the royal dynasty and the lineage of Atlantis and famous giant twins. Poseidon's five pairs of Nephilim twins were the famous 10 kings of Atlantis who were known as Atlas, Goddess, Ephraimus, Evamon, Menesis, Athaton, Epilipus, Mysore, Essus, and Daparis. They reigned absolutely over the Atlantean Empire, as per Atlantis writer Charles Burlis. Atlantis was subdivided into 10 distinct regions that became known as the helm at Antivillian world government. What is most intriguing with the legends of Atlantis is that Freemasons would like to recreate the Antillean Antivillian Age of Enlightenment, which had 10 kingdoms with 10 governments and 10 kings famous for being the helm at the Antivillian world government. The source emirates 10 Antivillian kings whose fabulous reign extended to thousands of years. The legends of the Iranian race commenced with the reign of 10 Poseidon kings, men of ancient law who lived on the pure Homa, a water of life or the nectar, who preserved their sanctity. In India, we met with the nine Brahmakiyas who with Brahma and their founder make 10 and who make or who call the 10 Pretras our fathers, the Chinese account ten emperors and partakes or partakers of the divine nature before the dawn of the historical times. The Germans believe in ten ancestors of Odin and the Arabs and the ten mythical kings of Adonis. Freemasonry believes in the number ten is significant when applied to government. Look at Manly P. Hall, 33 degree. Mason explains the League of Ten Kings is cooperative commonwealth of mankind, the natural and proper form of human government. Atlantis, therefore, is the archetype of the pattern of government which existed in the ancient days but was destroyed. Revelation chapter 10, or Revelation chapter 17, verse 10 through 11. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he come cometh, he must continue a short space. And the eighth or the beast that was is not even he is the eighth and of the seven and goeth into perdition. Because of the difficulties of involved with identifying the kings as emperors, some have suggested that the seven kings should be understood as seven kingdoms. The five that have fallen are Egypt, Assyria, Neo-Babylonia, Persia, and Greece. The one that is the sixth kingdom is Rome. Dispensationalists who take this approach tend to see that the seventh kingdom as a revived Roman Empire see the eighth kingdom as the kingdom of Antichrist. So let's go back over to Revelation chapter 17, verse 7 through 9. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, of the beast that carried her, which hath seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not 
and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life and the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and is yet or yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom that the seven heads are seven mountains of the woman that sit it. The Temet are the like of Leviathan, the Greek Hydra are seven headed serpents. So um, we look at Leviathan or, or Temet is a seven headed Hydra or, or Greek and the Greek the Hydra was an actual dragon. So let's look at Hydra. Hydra and Illuminati is a member that takes oaths to three demonic entities, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Hydra, who is Hydra. In the Christian New Testament, Hydra is described in the book, last book of Revelation, 17, verse 7 through 9, it is the beast with seven heads. That's why we read, before we let into this, we read Revelation uh, 17, verse 7 through 9 to tie this in. So um, Illuminati members, again, to reiterate, they take oaths to these three demonic entities, Lucifer, Beelzebub, and Hydra. So even when we go back to Hydra, we look at the Marvel comics and Marvel uh, movies with Captain America and Red Skull and um, with Hydra. Um, it tells you that they incorporate certain things that are within the occult. Marvel has a lot of esoteric things um, in their movies and within their comics. Um, that's a lesson within itself, but let's go ahead and move forward. Um, so when we look at Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 through 14, it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdoms as yet, but received power as kings in one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them for the Lord. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So let's tie in um, Psalms 2, verse 1 through 9. It says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against is anointed saying, I'm going to stop right there. So it kind of correlates what we're reading in Revelation chapter 17, verse 12 through 14. Um, these kings on the earth set themselves up and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. So it's it's a conspiracy. It's a, it's a council that takes place that they're rebelling against. Yeshua, Jesus, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. It says, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen of thy inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with the rod of iron that shall dash them in pieces like the potter's vessel. We're going to go ahead and conclude at Daniel. Chapter 2, verse 40 through 45. It says, And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, 
For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdue all things, as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes and part of the potter's clay and part of iron and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in of the strength of the iron for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as for the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay. So the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall be mingled themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And the days of these kings shall be the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in the pieces of the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come the pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof. So we know the final ultimate kingdom is when Jesus, Yeshua, comes back and disbands this one world, gov ultimate one world government led by the son of perdition, the Antichrist, which, which in Daniel chapter 7 um, talks about the little horn that comes and um, he makes war with the saints. Eventually, Jesus wins the ultimate battle and establishes his millennium kingdom for a thousand years and brings ultimate peace upon the world. So, and he's definitely living in the last days. Um, we live in trying times. We live in times that um, definitely things are taking place at a rapid pace um, with this pandemic and other things that are, are occurring. Um, so as the saints of the Most High, we must be vigilant and we must be walking in discernment of what's taking place. And if you're a sinner, and you're outside the family of God, um, you need to um, connect yourself with a Bible-believing church or Bible-believing community that will lead you into the faith. Um, you have to be um, baptized in water, baptized um, in the spirit, and then you become part of the family of God. But now you should take a real look at your soul, do some soul searching and ask the Lord to lead and guide you and direct you in the path that you should go. But um, this thing is real. We see prophecy steadily being fulfilled each and every day. So we should take note that the Bible is being fulfilled. Amen. God bless.